¿Qué tal? Bienvenidos a Cultura, Gobierno y Sociedad. Los saluda su amigo Héctor Chaparro con el gusto de siempre. Quiero darle las gracias a todos por ser parte de esta plataforma digital Canadá Latin Channel y por seguirnos en nuestras redes sociales. Si no lo has hecho, ve y búscanos como Canadá Latin Channel en Facebook, en Twitter, en Instagram, en YouTube, en nuestra página web www.canadalatinchannel.com. Esto es Canadá Latin Channel, información en tu idioma. Hoy vamos a hablar acerca del de nuevo beneficio que el gobierno de Canadá pues está anunciando y está proveyendo a toda la gente, a las familias en Canadá. Pero para hablarnos acerca de esto, tengo conmigo al ministro de la Familia y Desarrollo Social, Ahmed Hussein, que nos acompaña desde Ottawa. Y quiero darle la bienvenida a Cultura, Gobierno y Sociedad aquí por Canadá Latin Channel. Minister, thanks for being here in Canadá Latin Channel. Welcome again. Uh, gracias. Es un placer estar aquí con Canada Latin Channel. Gracias por darme la oportunidad de estar en su programa. Excelente. Muy, muy buen español. Gracias, ministro. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to join you once again, and I've always uh, appreciated, appreciated the opportunity to be with you and to talk to members of the community through your channel. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again, Minister. And well, we have good news. Um, yes. A week ago or something like that, you announced uh, some benefit. The benefit yeah. will be increased. Talk to us about what's going on, when is the update, and uh, how many people, how many families will be uh, benefit from this? Well, you know, uh, so t there's actually two increases. One is um, the on July 20th, uh, we increased the Canada Child Benefit once again. So we had promised that every time the cost of living increases, we will increase the Canada Child Benefit so that families can uh, can be supported, families with children. So um, this will help, you know, the Canada Child Benefit has already lifted 435,000 children out of poverty. It has put more money in the pockets of nine out of 10 families. And with this latest increase, so for this year, The, the year 2021 to 2022, the maximum Canada Child Benefit is $6,833 per child under the age of six and $5,765 per child for uh, children aged six years all the way to 17 years. So that's the maximum amount. Obviously, it depends on different families with different incomes, but that's the increase. We also... Um, We also, this year, we're doing a special temporary increase for, of, of up to $1,200 for families with children who are already receiving the Canada Child Benefit. But this extra $1,200 increase is only for children who are uh, under the age of six. Okay. Uh, so so there's, two, there's two changes to the Canada Child Benefit. One is the normal increase to reflect the increase in the cost of living, that uh, increase applies to all children who are already receiving the Canada Child Benefit from age zero to 17. And then for the special increase this year of one, up to $1,200, that's only limited to children who are aged six years or less. Excellent. That's a good news for all the families because uh, the government of Canada, I mean, uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, And the, I mean, and, and you as well, you are supporting the families, as you said, well, because the, yeah. the, uh, the cost of living is increasing. And, yes. and, uh, but but the, the, special, the special increase for this year, the temporary increase, and I have to correct that, it's for children under the age of six. So it's, okay. it's up to $1,200 for each child under the age of six. Um, and it's only for this year. So it's on top of the regular payments. They're getting an extra up to $1,200. So the way it works is if your household income is zero to $120,000, they will get, each child will get up to $1,200 this okay. year on top of their regular payments for the Canada Child Benefit. And if the household income is between $120,000 to $200,000, they will get up to $600 um, per child under the age of six. Now, for all the other children, 
including kids under the age of six, for zero to 17, they will get an increase because of the cost of living. And those ones, as I said, uh, if those children are between the age of uh, zero to six, they're getting, uh, under the age of six, they're getting $6,833. That's the maximum amount they can get. And uh, for the kids six to 17, they're getting $5,765. So uh, lots of support for children. The reason we're also doing the temporary increase of up to 1,200 is, is because a lot of families have ex with children have experienced more expenses because of the pandemic. They've had to buy uh, more uh, equipment, uh, paid a little bit more money for school supplies and other electronic equipment. So we need to support them as well. So um, you have another another program as well on top of this, or this is the only yeah. one increase? No, uh, we uh, last year, by the way, we did the same thing. We had a temporary increase in May, and then we had a permanent increase to, to cover the cost of living increase in uh, on July the 20th. Uh, in addition to that, I'm very happy to share news with uh, your uh, viewers that we are proceeding with the uh, investments we're making for childcare. So early learning and childcare is another promise that we made to help uh, families with children. As you know, the cost of childcare is very high in many, many parts of Canada. So we have promised to reduce childcare fees uh, right across Canada uh, down to $10 a day by 2025-2026 and bring it down, cut childcare fees in half by the end of 2022, which is next year. So, but for that to happen, we have to sign agreements with provinces and territories in Canada. We've already signed five agreements. The first one was with British Columbia. The second one was with uh, Nova Scotia. The third one was with Yukon. The fourth one was pr with Prince Edward Island. And the last one that we signed uh, just last week was with Newfoundland and Labrador. So those are five agreements. We hope the other provinces and territories will also join us. So for the provinces that have signed those agreements, they're receiving federal investments, which will reduce childcare fees in half by next year, and then bring it down to $10 on average, $10 a day childcare uh, by 2025, 2026. Two of the provinces that we've received, that we've signed agreements with PEI and Newfoundland Labrador, they've said that they will meet the $10 target earlier. So um, Prince Edward Island said that they can meet the $10 target by 2024, which is one year ahead of schedule. And uh, Newfoundland Labrador said they can meet the target of $10 a day childcare by 2023, which is two years ahead of schedule. So it's really great news for families. As you can imagine, many, many families are paying a lot of money for childcare. Some as high in some of the major cities, they're paying as high as $65 a day for per child. So we aim to cut that in half by next year and then uh, bring it down to $10 across the country by 2025, 2026. In order to reach that, our government will be investing $30 billion over the next five years, starting this wow, year. That's good. Uh, good 30 billion. And then after that, 9.2 billion every year after that. Uh, so this is, again, it's not just to cut the fees, but it is also to create more affordable childcare spaces and to train more teachers, to hire more teachers, and to make sure that our childcare system is inclusive of all children, including children with disabilities and indigenous children and children from racialized backgrounds. So this is really great news for families. As you know, families with young kids, this is a big, big uh, challenge, access to affordable childcare. Uh, if you have one or two kids, you know, in some cities you're paying $120, $130 a day for childcare, so it's 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 tough. Minister, what does it mean this in terms of uh, social development? Well, it you know, let me give you an example. A lot of parents, especially women with children, they want to go back to work. Yeah, but they're stuck because they don't have access to affordable childcare. So if you're paying a hundred a hundred dollars a day for childcare, if you have two kids, if you have even one kid and you're paying sixty five dollars a day, and you want to go back to work, it's a it's a it's an obstacle because a lot of women have to make this difficult choice between staying at home and taking care of their kids or going back to work. And they're finding that a lot of times they can't, they can't go back to work because they can't afford 
the childcare. So we're enabling those those parents, especially women, to go back to the workforce by giving them access to affordable, high quality childcare. And when we do that, our economy will benefit because all these people will come back to work and they will pay taxes. They will create to our economic, they will contribute to our economic productivity. They will contribute to our economic growth. So, you know, there's been studies that have been done. You know, the best example is the study done by the Toronto Dominion Bank Group. They did a study that showed that every dollar that is invested in childcare, society, we as a country get back $2.80 in, in, in benefit. So this is not just a, a smart social policy, it's also a very smart economic policy. That's why a lot of uh, business uh, groups and CEOs, they support this. They support affordable childcare because they, they know that this will help them to, to attract talent and workers. Uh, who they need for economic growth. And as we come out of this pandemic, we have to make sure that uh, our economic recovery is inclusive of everyone, that no one is left behind. And one of the best ways to do that is to invest in childcare. So not only are we giving those women an opportunity to come back to the workforce, we're giving those children the best possible start in life. Excellent. That's good news for all the Canadians, all the families yeah. uh, living here. Yeah, and uh, we, we, we are just um, crossing and we can see a light um, in, yes, the, you know, in the tunnel just yes. uh, for this. Um, Minister, something else you want to add before we end? Uh, I always appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, one of the things that I want to highlight is our investments in childcare are inclusive. So we want to make sure that children of all cultural backgrounds, uh, as I said, Canadian children with disabilities, children who need extra supports, indigenous children, as well as children from racialized backgrounds, black Canadian children, Latino, Latin American uh, Canadian children, uh, children from all backgrounds have access to this uh, system. That's why we're building a system. And to build the system, you know, I can say to you, you know, you have access to $10 a, a day childcare, but it, what if you don't have enough spaces? Yeah. Even Quebec, the province of Quebec has $10 a day childcare. There are 51,000 children who are in the wait list because they are waiting for a space. So not only do we have to make the, the childcare affordable, we have to create the spaces, right? We have to create yeah. enough spaces to make sure that every child has a chance. But to create the spaces and to deliver the high quality childcare, we also need more teachers. So we need to train them. We need to hire them. We need to pay them well. So this strategy, this $30 billion federal investment, plus the investments from the provinces and territories, will ensure that we get there. And, uh, and so our agreements uh, that we're signing include all of those things, affordability, accessibility, high quality, and inclusivity. Uh, and the Canada Child Benefit, what can I say? So many parents uh, appreciate the Canada Child Benefit. It allows them to buy healthy food for their kids. Some parents use the Canada Child Benefit payments to buy new clothing for their children. I've spoken to parents who've said, this is the first time I've been able to afford new clothes for my child. Other parents have said that they have used the Canada Child Benefit money to sign up their kids for uh, more activities and more programs, right? Yeah. So this is a good, a good program. It, it, is, it, it fights child poverty. It lifts children out of poverty and we have to give children the best possible chance in life. Excellent. Well, uh, as I said, good news for all the Canadians, all the families. And as always, Minister, I'm going to say thanks for being here and explain us what exactly is going on and how the government is supporting those, those, those families. Thank you so much. And I always appreciate Canada Latin Channel. You're doing amazing work to inform the community Thank on you. what the government is doing, what is the latest updates. Uh, you're also providing them with health, health information so that we can continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, you're doing amazing work for the community. And I always appreciate coming on your show and having this conversation. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Minister. Bueno, a mí no me queda más que agradecer el favor de tu atención. Gracias por ser parte de esta plataforma Canada Latin Channel y por seguirnos. Te recuerdo que estamos en Facebook, en Twitter, en Instagram, en YouTube, en nuestra página web www.canadalatinchannel.com. Mi nombre es Héctor Chaparro y esto es Canada Latin Channel. 
y canal de Latin Channel es información en tu idioma. Hasta pronto.